Okay, so my current workstation leaves a lot to be desired. It's mostly just a basic L desk, a really awesome monitor that I can't mount because it's not basic compatible, which is why we bought all kinds of new stuff to actually make a good setup. Uh, we got the Elgato pop-up green screen, that thing's really awesome. And then the gaming couch. Now, using a couch is definitely comfortable and feels good, but it's hard to, like, get really comfortable arm positioning, and of course it's destroying my spine. So, an upgrade is probably due now. This has served me well for years. If you, too, want to become a six-figure Pokemon content creator, this will be serviceable, and then you can use Movie Maker and still get away with it. So, let's actually make something real, though. Now, I was inspired by this tweet that went viral because that is every gamer's dream right there, and I have no reason to not build something that I want, especially because I'm losing egregious amounts of money playing stock options, so if I don't spend it, some Wall Street dude that's smarter than me will, and I'm not a complete degenerate, so I'm not going with the bed. However, what it seems like these guys do is they don't sell products, they sell designs, and then you order everything off of Amazon and they get a kickback. They probably also have like some direct commission setups, so you can actually see a lot of different ideas that they have for like live, work, sleep, and all that fun stuff. Correction, they are their own brand. So my first thought when I see a list linking to Amazon is that they're getting a kickback for very basic product, like that's just free money for coming up with designs. But no, it seems like they have manufacturing for basic shelving and desk units and props to them. They made a business out of it. They come up with really cool ideas, they get them viral, and then you can order their product and they're making extra money because but having it manufactured cheap, selling it, boom. And the game system while sleeping seemed the most appealing to me, that instead of getting just a straight up bed, we get a reclining gaming chair because other gaming chairs haven't done it for me. I got like an ergonomic, just regular business chair. I didn't like it. I was a little too fidgety in it. I got a regular like racing style gamer chair. I still curl up shrimp mode in it. So I was like, okay, if we can get something reclining going on, that's going to be comfortable, this design looks appealing to me, and I can just kind of recycle the things around the house, buy a couple of upgrades, it's going to be good to go. I don't have any RGB, so that could be a future upgrade, but it should be... You can't fail with that. Watch me fail, though. Now, unfortunately, my good mic is all the way over there, so I'm going to have to speak up, and hopefully you guys can still hear me as we go for the reveal. And you know what? It works. We got a nice reclining setup. We got the top part of the Couch Master, easy green screen, monitor, it's mounted well, and, of course, the RGB computer. And then we have a second desk over here for peripherals and stuff like that. A little bit of extra space for food and beverages and it reclines well, it's comfortable. It's not the flashiest looking thing, but I think it gets the job done. I hope this works because I'm not supposed to be recording in the other half of the room, but um, yeah, ironically, the Couch Master works with the existing couch setup that I already had. This is more comfortable than that, and I'm not using the expensive foamy parts of the Couch Master, so I was maybe better off only spending, or not spending the $300 on the reclining gaming chair and just kind of making this work. Like you put a little side desk over here and if you have like a smaller monitor, then you don't need like something flimsy, scary like that over there. And it actually works. This could almost be really good for like a tiny gaming setup. And then it would be easier to pimp out because there's less parts. Like, there's just a lot of empty space over there, and I'm not going to spend $400 on stupid RGB to make it look crazy or anything, or get, like, wire racks to hang things from. But, um, yeah, like, this works. And that's kind of silly. Which is not to say I don't like what I have going on right here, because this works as well. The idea is, easy in. We then kick back, pop out, couch master on, get everything nice and in position, and this is what I was going for. Something comfortable, better for my spine, and also increases work and gaming productivity. This is all I need to do all that I want, and I'm actually feeling better in video games with like precision mouse movement and stuff, because when you're coming like from the corner of a couch, arcing in, on like an awkwardly positioned desk, now this is the worry, but if I'm not touching it, everything is stable, and I think that that's just how this is going to be. 
Like, if I, like, I, everything's good. Like, I don't have any awkwardness going on, so I can play games, I can work, and I've already made a video. The one that I made, actually my last video, I was talking about the upcoming Pokemon news that was made in the setup. Now the mic is also different because I can pull it in, stretch it out. That's going to mess up the audio for this video because I had to turn up the gain so I can record across the room, but let's see the idea. Which brings us to the camera. So the biggest benefit of having a setup like this is I'm going to be just in the same spot every single time, monitor, same position, put the camera up there. But there are a couple of ways of going about it. Do I want the more head-on approach? Kind of makes it weird because the meta is you kind of want to face the content that you are reacting to. Now, as you guys saw, I have a pretty big monitor. It's a 32 inch curved gaming monitor. So I usually just have like two tabs and I just split the screen and that's how I manage my workflow and stuff. So I usually have like one tab over here with the video and stuff and then the recording over there just so I can like hide and check out what's going on. Um, depends on how I get that set up. Also, we can just, you know, do a little bit of cropping, a little bit of editing. So we move the camera, go to the layout. We can cut whatever we want, however we want it. So, you know, a little bit off the side, a little bit off the side. And that's that, that's definitely not how I want to go about it. Maybe take off some on the bottom. And then, infamously, we can go green screen. Uh, it takes a little bit of adjustment as well, depending on, like, how that's going on. Some camera adjustment as well. Um, let's see. Boom. Video input. And we can control the brightness. We can control the white balance. So the auto white balance seems to do a really good job because that's natural colors this is also the c922 so i upgraded my webcam for the setup as well um adjusting white balance is weird because you go from like washed out which i don't need to look any more pale entire than i already do to like right here there's a little threshold where suddenly like oh there's color and extra saturation and then like kind of want to hang right on that balance uh, there's also a couple of other ideas and philosophies about this. Do I want to go low exposure but more light? Or do I want to go, or yeah, do I want to go higher exposure, less light? And, you know, the auto exposure, I think, well, that's actually pretty good. Normally it, like, might be a little too washed out or something. But yeah, so then we just have it set up to where, turn on camera, ready to go. My workflow is effectively the same in how I'm going to record videos. And then we make Pokemon videos like we always have. Actually, I'm liking the center idea for this. So maybe you know, move this just a little bit somewhere between on the edge and in the center. And then, of course, we have to shrink ourselves down. That way we're not in the way. But, you know, that, that center thing might be catching on a little bit. Also, it can work like if I'm just a little offset, something like that. Uh, this spooked me out because I was like, wait a second. We're getting a new tease. And then I only saw... I didn't see the... Uh, Sendelias. I just saw Nuevos de Pokemon. I was like, wait, wait, is this like an official Pokemon tease? But the way that these go is that it's like a very advanced who's that Pokemon. Seems like Grimmsnarl is the way to go, but other than that, rate my setup. So the interesting thing is I was like kind of looking back when I was editing the video at the original like Japanese post, and it does seem kind of empty. It's like overly flashed up. It also has just like complete ba black background. So I'm, I, I was going to give myself like an 8 out of 10, but I'm thinking... 8.5 um yeah i'm not gonna like waste um money on those leaf lights or whatever and then you know just make led wall lining and stuff i could but it seems unnecessary especially if i'm going for a green screen i'm not gonna have anything going on in the background i was like move the camera over there and then i do a side angle but that'd be kind of weird yeah, I don't think that'd be meta enough because you want the face cam for the reactions, for the expressions, not the back of my he head and a little bit of jaw movement as we saw earlier in the video. Either way, hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.